Hi guys and welcome back. This is episode two. I'm Curtis. I'm Jordan. And this is Life in the Edge. So the 10 most useful things in our motorhome. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to quickly discuss the list now. And then what I'm going to do is take you around the motorhome, uh, little clips that I did yesterday of all the items that are on our list. So for us, it's the Fiema garage storage system. It is. It's also the remote holder. Uh, it's also about our EcoFlow Delta Mini. And I know everybody's heard about EcoFlow, but we just want to tell you how it works for us. Our Garmin sat-nav. Our Thetford, no, not Thetford, they're Dometic. So our Dometic window blinds. Our thermostatic shower. Our Victron uh, inverter sort of off-grid system. Our kids' TV bracket. Our Alpicool fridge. And our memory foam toppers. You're not looking at that list down there, are you? No. <laughs> um, so one of the first things we wanted to discuss was our Fiema garage storage system. So uh, what I'll do is I'll flip the camera and... So here it is. This is in the back of our motorhome. So we did originally have it on this edge here. Uh, we found out with loading long things like awnings or chairs or tables in, um, it wasn't working on that side. So I recently just shifted it to the far end of the garage on our, our swift edge. Uh, simple system, comes all flat packed, uh, uses the connecting aluminium rail system, so it's kind of insert a few bolts, uh, put the L brackets on, uh, and you can adapt it to your motor and we had to trim it down in our case to fit in. In terms of the containers, they're flat pack, uh, so you can, when you're not in use, you can actually fold them down. They stay up the majority of the time for us, unless we've got to transport anything really large in it, in which case we can remove the garage system. Uh, this way round we've got a door the other side which is a small inlet door uh, and we tend to use that to pull the chairs um, and, and the stuff along the right hand side. Uh, it's a great little system, uh, not too costly, I'll, I'll pop the link in for it in terms of, of where we got it from, but in terms of keeping things tidy and organised it's worked really well. Uh, while we're in the garage I'll show you a few other things that we've done. So along the left hand side We've got uh, additional socket, so we've got the European type uh, cigarette lighter uh, and an additional power socket. So the reason we swapped for the European type is it's a much better connection. Um, so we often found that when we were traveling, because we have the fridge in the boot here, that the, the socket could get rattled out. So we swapped to the, I think it's called European DIN. So we've got one of those sockets in there which provides us 12, 12 volt power, uh, as well as um, a great little shower socket, so we put this here instead of having to drill the external of the, the motorhome again. Uh, to be honest, when we're, we're on a campsite, sometimes when we're, we've got the awning up, we'll have a kettle and, and bits and bobs in here, so it's really handy for filling the kettle, uh, washing the dogs off, um, yeah, uh, and when we come back from the beach, so that's worked really well for us. Uh, we've got various storage bits and bobs, so... Uh, just lots of hooks, so we've got the, the awning rail um, wind out and as well as we've got the lighting pole as well when we have the, the annex up on the side, so this is, is just a LED tube. Um, yeah, so that's our little tour of our garage. Thank you. So these are our remote holders, we've got various ones around the motorhome. So yeah, they're great for actually holding your TV remotes, stop them rattling when you're traveling, but they're also great for popping your iPhone in. So uh, my glamorous resist uh, resistance, no, assistant, is going to have to pop it over for you. You might have to remove the remote first, Mr. Man. There we go. So yeah, they pop in. Uh, the great thing also, they stick really well. Yeah, They've got holes underneath, which he'll just show you. Uh, they, so the charges go under... Um, no need to kind of try and stick your charger in. So really good, stick really well. We don't use the same tape, do we? No. So uh, anything from China normally come with your sort of double-sided tape. What we did is we found out one of them dropped off in the summer with the heat. So we actually swapped those over to 3MVB tape and they've not shifted since. So after a bit of a trial and error with various sat-navs, in the end we opted for the Garmin Camper. Uh, it works really well in terms of with, with the motorhome having be able to program in the width, the height, the length. Uh, that suits us really well because travelling down in the southwest with some of the narrow roads, this has been a bit of a lifesaver when the M5 has been shut. Um, we did do it with Apple Maps and, and, and other software 
Uh, but yeah, we've got into a few hair raising moments previously uh, with with some of the very narrow country lanes. So we love this in terms of phone integration. Uh, there's a reverse camera also included as part of that, which is wireless. There's live traffic that you can hook through your phone and also there's Bluetooth uh, if you need to do it. Not that we do because we, we tend to do it through the motorhome. Uh, it does have a hail command similar to the, the Siri type thing, but for specific for a, a, a Garmin. Yeah, and it, it works really well. Uh, so we love this. And one of the little tricks we did do, so excuse me if this falls off because I'm trying to do it one handed. So is the existing mirror grip that was on the motorhome, uh, obviously for the Fiat uh, review mirror, which obviously no use to us having a solid back wall. What I did is uh, I filed off uh, the little end, uh, the little end ball. And then what I did is dipped the actual ball fitting uh, from the Fiat uh, wind, windscreen uh, mirror holder into resin a couple of times to increase the size of this ball and that works really really well in terms of actually the Garmin coupling on the back so normally you'd have window suction on uh, and by doing this little hack it meant that we could actually use the existing stub that was on and delivered by obviously by Fiat so yeah um, if you want any more details on that if you pop some notes in the comments in terms of you'd like me to, to discuss that a bit further but yeah that works really well with a nice little hack uh, in terms of actually uh, the power to it, so we bought one of the uh, long reach uh, Garmin uh, cables. I can warn you, we tried to buy one off Amazon, which is just a usual uh, USB, uh, I think these are the micro. Uh, didn't work because the, the Garmin didn't spot it as, as actually being uh, the right power supply for this. So I, I don't know quite how they do it. Uh, but yeah, it certainly knew it wasn't, so we had lots of problems in terms of charging. So yeah, always worth, and to be honest, it wasn't that dear, was, was the Garmin cable. So that just goes through um, the blind system in terms of, of the, the plastic casings, down to the fuse box, which obviously great on, on Fiat, so it's down on this side, on the driver's side. And we just use one of the uh, integrated fuse doublers uh, out to a, a cigar adapter, and then plug the, the, the other end of this in. But again, uh, pop it in the comments if you if you want me to actually go through that. I'm I'm happy to sort of semi disassemble this and, and show you how I built it. But super quick in terms of uh, yeah using a fuse doubler, and and worked really well for us. So yeah, that's our sat nav. So in terms of blind setup, uh, we opted for Dometic. So because we've got a Swift Edge, which is obviously a, a kind of the base model in, in sort of Swift Motorhome, um, it doesn't come with integrated blinds. They do supply the the usual sort of suction cup type interior blinds. Uh, yeah, not great. Uh, not really particularly easy to put on. Uh, not great for stowing in, in the boot. So we did start with a uh, external silver sort of tailor made blind. Uh, absolutely phenomenal in terms of uh, working for the summer and the winter. What we did find only the only thing was it's quite difficult to put on in terms of when we were just stopping over. Uh, during the day just to protect the valuables in terms of people looking in so we opted for to go for a set of internal blinds so in our particular case these are Dometic ones uh, we sourced them from O'Leary's which get a lot of their parts from Swift uh, we suspect that actually they got quite a lot of them because uh, there was a model change year between 21 22 and quite a lot of delays from Fiat and I understand some of the interior panels have changed so maybe they don't fit anymore so they offloaded them to O'Leary's great for us um, yeah brilliant love dealing with O'Leary's in terms of getting older Swift spares uh, in terms of easy to fit yeah really easy to fit in, in terms of that I've actually had dealing with the Remis ones again they're they're easy to fit the only difference with the uh, Dometic ones is they do quite require quite a bit extra few screws um, which usual precautions in terms of uh, protection in terms of uh, rust anti-rust so yeah use those with these um, but they're they're super slick they're great in terms of, of internal match to existing parts. They, they don't have to, you'd have to take a lot of the existing parts off, unlike the Remis ones. These actually rely on uh, being quite, uh, well, actually, I may as well just show you. So in terms of uh, ease to open, so pop them open. It's as easy as that. They fold down into the door. So yeah, the existing frames stay in. Uh, this is just mainly what you're actually putting in as part of the installation. They're super slick. Um, maybe because I'm doing this with one hand. So just bear with me if it doesn't go too well, but um, yeah, and then just lock them in. They're brilliant. Uh, the, one of the bigger differences is actually the central blind. So it doesn't come from uh, middle split. Uh, did have a problem with that a few times in terms of the magnet uh, 
sort of parting in the night which is, is great until the sun starts in the summer about half past four in the morning and suddenly the interior uh, cabin's quite uh, bright and obviously a little boy was like oh it's morning time and it's like no it's not um so yeah these are pull up and drop down uh again it's pretty much like a concertina blind drop in so yeah down to your dashboard and then obviously pull up yeah and there we go so yeah uh love the dometic ones uh so easy to fit in terms of the instructions are very clear uh one of the great things we liked about these is we didn't have to drill the dashboard in terms of putting those rails in for like you do after for the remis ones this is all done in in just the pillar caps uh these obviously bolt on i think there's about five screws each side uh, a little bit down here that you do you pop in with the template but yeah really good so in terms of upgrades for the bathroom uh we fitted a thermostatic uh mixer valve for the shower so traditionally this would be through the tap uh which we were very concerned uh with little mr man in terms of the scold risk uh you can operate it at 40 degrees the boiler but one of the problems with that is you can't then get multiple showers so we have the boiler set to max uh and then we have the, obviously the pressure protection of the thermostatic valve uh, that's actually a valve for a static caravan uh, you can get them i can pop the link in for them actually uh, not much effort in fitting other than some elbows and a little bit of pipe and a plywood backer on it uh, but it works absolutely brilliant you can alter the flow rate you can change the actual temperature uh, and again it keeps you away from that scold wrist the other thing we've fitted is uh, i think they're called a douche head uh, they're normally used with uh, b-day toilets um i think they're now standard fit ours came with an eco camel i swapped over to one of those because they help you when you're off grid in terms of really limiting your consumption uh also great for washing your hair in the sink because you can obviously unhook it and wash your hair over the sink and you don't have to get the shower tray wet if you're just washing your hair so that's an another little smart tip for that they're a great little addition uh, in terms of those heads uh, the toilets had an upgrade uh, that's had the um, Thetford SOG system fitted so that's direct venting out of the bottom of, of the motorhome now keeps the nasty nifts down during the summer which is brill um, again uh, quite easy to fit lots of videos online about how to do that uh, I think the worst thing was realizing there was a bracket actually uh, holding it on the wall which is hidden behind that panel there so yeah uh, it does warn you actually uh, in the cassette that it's got um, a strange fitting so yeah once you remove that you can access that with a screwdriver to actually unhook it from the wall um, oh the other thing we had to do is obviously because we changed the the shower tap type uh, we contacted O'Leary's and managed to get hold of a shorter version of the kitchen tap uh, I think they're Comet, um, something like Victor, I think they call them. Uh, but again, a quick search on that, you'll soon find out what the actual Swift tap type is. Looks lovely, uh, looks as if it, as if it uh, sort of came as part of the motorhome. So yeah, been happy with what we've done in the, uh, the bathroom. So in true fashion, as Jordan says, obviously I love my gadgets. So a couple of upgrades that we did. So originally our... Swift came with Swift Command LCD, so we upgraded this to the Colour Touch version. So I phoned Sergeant, said can it be done, they said yes. Panel's quite expensive, um, so I actually found one on eBay. So I think it was about £149. Uh, super easy to use. Uh, yeah, We had the LCD normal one in our caravan previously, and I hated it because it was quite complicated in terms of menus, options going through. This one, brilliant. Um, in terms of our Victron system, so uh, we have Victron inverters, uh, PV chargers, battery to battery chargers, and our onboard charger as well also is a Victron. Uh, the servo system for controlling it all is it's quite expensive. It's £400, then you've got to buy the LCD on top of that. So I found a little project on t online in terms of open source, and they support using Raspberry Pi. So this is a Raspberry Pi with uh, a LCD panel, and then I 3D printed the bezel to fit it on here. So this works great. If you want me to go into any more detail about this, uh, pop something in the comments and I'm happy to go through actually how I went through that and I can show you the links actually to uh, the open source uh, and some instructions on to do it. Uh, we've also got the Truma uh, I panel, uh, iNet X panel. Uh, I bought this after our LCD screen um, started being a bit iffy 
so um, I'm not sure that was the best decision if I'm honest. I know that a lot of features are coming online in the future, but we're missing the timers and also uh, Sargent used to do integration with the Truma panel to allow for current limiting. So um, it would turn the heating off if you were boiling the kettle. That sadly we don't have any more, uh, but luckily the Victron can do a boost uh, or power assist during that, that, that stage anyway. So we've kind of got away from it that, that slightly. Um, these are, are set to change in terms of Truma are updating them on a constant basis. So we're hopeful in the future that some additional features have come. Um, on the back of that, there is a, a CI bus connector but they no longer do the protocol to allow the uh, swift command to talk to it so i have spoke to sergeant about it i don't know if anything's going to happen um but we are where we are one of those things i think you learn by your mistakes sometimes but yeah if you want any of me to discuss in this any further please subscribe like and pop some comments in and i'll certainly get back to you so we're just going to review our brackets that we use to uh, secure ipads or devices tablets whatever that you might use for a tv we've actually glued this down um it is one of the ones with the sucker pad on, underneath we've glued it down um you, do, you don't really uh, have the capability to be able to hold the full weight of an ipad so we kind of use it just as a stabilizer um but it's quite it's very secure when he's up here watching tv or you know playing playing his tablet device uh, really good really secure and uh, well worth the investment we'll put the link uh, on our YouTube channel yep super um, flexible in terms of you can bend them into all sorts of shapes all it is is we've got a ruggedized case on the iPad so it's just a little bit over the weight limit in terms of being able to suspend it he's got um, he had an iPad mini and that held it that, that in did the air. really that, was really, that good. did really good so yeah oh and don't forget the little fan yeah yeah we have our little fan that we just use to cool him down because uh, when you're actually up here it can get really quite warm but it's super comfy yeah um and if i could i'd go to sleep right now <laughs> Um, yeah, so yeah what we've, we've found is we've got air conditioning uh, mid-cab, uh, sort of. we've got a Truma air conditioning unit and we just use that fan to get it well circulating so uh, it just pushes a nice cool area's way in summer uh, and when the sun's beating down actually uh, on the in-cab bed. But as I said, Jordan says I think it's one of the best uh, sort of beds in terms of comfiness because it's a nice big double. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure it'd be sort of much fun climbing over each other at night to get to Lou, but um, yeah, not so much as a problem. With but we're going to cover this, and I think this has uh, a mattress topper on. Yes, it does. We'll, which, we'll show um, the ones in the back. It's a bit easier to show. But yeah, we've got memory foam mattresses, uh, uh, additional toppers on them. So they come with Duvalet. Again, uh, in fact, do you know what? I'm going to leave that till that review. So... Um, We've got the Duvalet uh, mattresses, and with it being an edge, obviously it's a base model. Uh, what we found is they were just that little bit too thin. So uh, in terms of comparison, you can see that's the one without an additional memory foam topper, and this one's obviously about two inch higher. So what we did is order online. Uh, we have bed elastics underneath, which are sort of the old fashioned kind of micro elastic holders. So uh, they you can't work. see them, love. You can't see them. Yeah. Love. Can we see them now? Yeah, that's much better. So yeah, these actually hold because they're strange shapes. These hold on well. They're just elasticated with some grab handles. So I'll just release that one so I can show you. So usual single covers over the top, and then what we've got underneath is I don't know if you can see this, but there's the two-inch memory foam. There's the original Duvalet uh, mattress underneath, and then we got these. Um, they're zip-on covers, so they're, they're all the way around, so they're underneath and they, they zip on at the bottom. And the reason we use those is they're like a terry fabric and they conform to the actual strange shape of the mattresses. So in terms of mattress shapes, um, when it comes to ordering, we ordered a... I'm just going to pop this back on. They are so much more comfier yeah, though. They're, 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 they definitely are, yeah. It's just that additional bit of comfort uh, that they give us with that uh, sort of little bit of extra memory foam. The the covers that are over the top of them allow them to breathe better so you don't get the sort of, I call it the sweaty syndrome when you've got uh, memory foam toppers. Um, yeah, because they're, they're like a, a rubberized material, we find often you can end up feeling quite clammy. So yeah, the... the um, 
the full wrap uh, cover that goes over those that allow them to breathe. So in terms of actually cutting these, my best advice is uh, if you've got parents or you are indeed actually around that era, those fantastic electric carving knives from sort of the 80s and 90s were phenomenal in terms oh. of cutting these. Oh, the meat cleavers. <laughs> yeah, the meat, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, what we did is uh, lay the duvalet uh, mattress in, in the kitchen, make a quick template. Um, then what we did is unfolded the memory foam mattress because when you order them online, they come as a roll. So we left those for 72 hours to, to rebound back and then just with a Sharpie pen, uh, traced over um, the actual mattress template and then cut it with an electric carving knife. And they've worked brilliantly and saved us. Well, I would hate to think how much it is to order a custom mattress because these, these corner things you'll round the corner. If you've got one of these where the cables run down, uh, they sculpture off. There's actually a capability of these two, these two wardrobes under here um, and actually can do a half lift, but we actually wanted to remove mm. because you can feel it behind your knees sometimes in terms of where the break is in the mattress to allow them to fold up. So we just use the doors with, uh, with these little interior lights in there so we don't have to lift them up vertically this way. So yeah, that, that's, uh, that's been great in terms of for comfort, memory foam. Uh, they can form really well. Um, yeah, super soft. Yeah. We've, yeah. we've only done the three beds too, so we've left the... Yeah, we've left the dinette the, main, bed. the the dinette bed is just as it uh, is, is just as it is because we we don't really use that. So we're going to do a bit of a, a jewel review. So we've we've come back in the house because little Mister Man obviously was wandering uh, through to the motor to see what we were doing. So again, another type of adoption thing. The umbilical cord never very stretches far. So yeah, uh, he's upstairs now, happily playing his game, so we can crack on with this. And uh, in fairness, we wouldn't have the space in the uh, caravan. Yeah, it's uh, it. yeah, it, it's uh, it's a quite a lot. So yeah, this is our Alpi Cool uh, portable fridge freezer, DC compressor, fantastic bit of kit. Uh, it's got um, to tilt it forward. So yeah, you've got uh, combinations. Uh, so you can have fridge and freezer, both in freezer mode, both in fridge mode. Um, so the removable divider is what actually activates whether it's uh, in two halves or a single unit. Two nice big baskets, great for lifting stuff out when you're rifling stuff at the bottom. Uh, when we went to France this year, this was an absolute lifesaver for us. Um, what we tend to do, and, and we mentioned it in our first video, is that we tend to take a lot of food with us. Um, pre-prepared, uh, we don't take kind of ready meals. What we do is we make them own batch cook and then take them with us. Uh, Our little boy's really fussy about what he eats. Yeah. We are going to France or something. So, so yeah. It's often difficult. All things beige food. Um, we, we do try to, to move him, but a lot of the time it's not worth the hassle. Uh, you know, he just likes what he likes and we're quite accepting of that. Um, funnily enough, when we did go to to Carrefour, he loved it, and he picked some some lovely stuff uh, that we really enjoyed. But yeah, this, this worked brilliant for us in terms of getting proper temperatures, um, deep freeze. It is actually a proper deep freeze on this one. I think it's either minus eighteen or minus twenty, uh, and everything was absolute rock solid on holiday. Uh, one of the great things as well is obviously. During the day, if we don't want to leave uh, the inverter packs on uh, or leave the um, Swift command on, what we can do is swap the actual freezer over to the EcoFlow as well. So we've run it off this uh, on the DC socket and uh, also on the AC socket. It works on both. This is a, yeah, it's, it's been a bit of a lifesaver. The, the fridges are never very big uh, in motorhomes. And the other thing is they're never very accurate on temperature, what we have found, especially with uh, warm weather climates. So we rely on this in, in our boot um, and we work our way through it during our holidays. It's also quite handy for, for when you come home at Christmas time as well, extra food. So yeah, we, 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 we've used this quite a lot this year. Uh, I'll pop the link into this. Um, we did look at uh, the Dometic system. Uh, their, their CDF freezers, fridge freezers, but they were just absolutely phenomenal price. Uh, I think this was a, a couple of hundred quid. We've had it, I think it's eight months now. Mm. It's never a problem with it. It's been, it's been phenomenal. So yeah, um, EcoFlow, yeah, I think everybody's been EcoFlow to death. I think they did quite an extensive program in terms of uh, providing uh, YouTubers sort of in the van life area with a lot of these in terms of review. 
uh, an honest review from us in terms of uh, we purchased this yeah never worked with dogs and children so obviously you saw little mr man coming earlier um now the dog's barking in the garden um yeah actually on that note back to all things adoption uh yeah the umbilical cord never really stretches far so even the fact that we were in the motor home on the drive it's that uh that reassurance of coming to check we're there it's too it's too far it's yeah it's too, too far it, it can just about <clears throat> help upstairs downstairs is enough um, the worst thing is when he's on his scooter and you want him to scoot in front of you, it's near on impossible. Yeah, he well, do it. well he, he does twice the distance because he goes out and back, out and back. Um, yeah, actually, that, that's another good point because obviously we charge the scooter off this as well. Um, yeah, we, we, we got him an electric scooter for Christmas. Uh, one of the things we've often found is walk, walking long distances uh, uh, doesn't work um, for us. Um He's more than capable. Uh, we've spoke to a lot of our friends with adopted kids and the same, the same is that actual getting them to walk. It's quite boring, in fairness. Um, it's something we did as a child. I don't know if I'd ever class it as something I enjoyed. I'd enjoy a nice walk uh, now as an adult. So what we decided to do was, was get him a scooter. Oh my God, it's like the gateway to being able to spend the day out. Uh, he loves taking his scooter. Uh, we bought a, a nice lithium one. Uh, and it lasts all day um, and, and he just scoots happily back and forwards. It's got a great little mechanism to fold the handlebar so you can pick it up. So if we go in a, a bar or if we, we go into a shop, you, you know, you can just pick it up and take it in with you. So, so anyway, back to the review. Um, yeah, so uh, we bought this uh, before, uh, obviously we started with YouTube. This was out of our personal money. Um, Great for charging uh, things like USB-C, so MacBook, it supports PD charging. Uh, we've not had any problems with it at all, never failed to charge, never failed to give what it says, uh, sort of label on the box. Uh, it's really handy in terms of running little things like induction hobs off, uh, little uh, motorhome kettle. Again, all great things because we sometimes, when we're, we're doing a bit of camping out uh, and we've got a tent set up near us or uh, we've got our driveway awning set up, we can pop the, the EcoFlow in there to, to run the bits and bobs that we need. So yeah, great little bit of kit. So that's a wrap for this week's video. So please like and subscribe. And thank you for watching Life in the Edge. Like a truck there.